Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Saying goodbye to the 60s and hello to the real November. Starting out dry, but finishing the weekend with snow. We'll tell you how much to expect coming up. Tonight, Michigan's top legislative Republicans are in D.C. after a meeting with the president, and they're detailing what was discussed behind closed doors. All right, Mara, but first, an early morning fire in a vacant home burns down a family's home along with it. Good to have you with us at 11. That fire broke out around dawn. It appears to have been intentionally set. Also intentional were the heroic actions of neighbors on Lane Street to get the family out of the house. While they are safe tonight, they've lost everything. Jason Colthorpe spoke to them and has the video that captured all of this, including two individuals who appear to have set that fire. Jason. It's really incredible, Kim, and you can see behind me just how hot and how intense this fire was burning down this vacant home here. And the fire department was just out here a couple hours ago, putting out hot spots still in the trees. And you can see the house next to it gone. This is where Elite Lopez and her family lived, and she is devastated. She's afraid. She doesn't speak English. Her husband was deported back to Mexico just a couple of years ago after his work visa expired. They were already struggling. Things were difficult, and now they have nothing. My son looked out of his bedroom window, and he's seen a bright red light. When fire broke out early this morning on Lane Street in southwest Detroit, neighbors weren't all that worried at first because it was a vacant house. But then the fire spread quickly to the trees and then the house next door. I was hitting that door so hard, I, my hand is still sore. Rodney Cavan ran across the street to get Elite Lopez and her three kids out of the house. They didn't answer. Within the next 20 to 30 seconds, I was kicking it in. Home security video shows Elite, her two boys, ages 16 and 11, and her four-year-old girl getting out safely. They're our neighbors, and they're like family to us. She explained through an interpreter that was her only concern. <laughs> She was scared more because she wanted to take out her kids first. The video also shows this fire was no accident. They saw two men with a gasoline can come in the back door, and I guess they dumped it and lit it up. As for Elik, she's mom and dad at the same time. You know, her her husband was deported like two or three years ago. You know, it's been very hard on her. Her extended family is now rallying around her. It's just something very hard, you know, to see your family member in that situation. You know, when they lose everything, you know, you're hopeless. You don't you don't have nowhere to go, nothing. You know, if if you don't have help from nobody, like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, and it's been a long day for Elik Lopez, and which is why she didn't want to appear on camera. Uh, the investigation, by the way, just beginning into who may have set this fire that started all of this. And by the way, uh, the Lopez family is being helped out by a group called Detroiters Helping Each Other, coordinating donations and any monetary donations, including clothing or everyday items. If you'd like to help out in that regard, we put all of that information with this story at ClickOnDetroit.com. Kimberly, Jason, how, how long had the house been empty? You know, that's the other frustrating thing here for years, but it had also been condemned by the city to be demolished a few years ago. And just recently, family told me that the city came out again, signifying that it was about to be demolished. And they thought that was coming. That was almost imminent, but obviously not soon enough. Yeah, Kimberly, indeed. OK, Jason, thanks. Some breaking news to tell you about right now just in from Detroit's west side where police have shot a robbery suspect. Officers responded to Players Liquor Store on West Chicago and Schaefer for a robbery in progress. Police say the gunman pointed a gun at them and they shot him. A gun was recovered at the scene. The gunman was taken to the hospital. Leadership of the Michigan legislature met with President Trump at the White House late this afternoon, a visit that drew a lot of criticism. Our Mar McDonald is live downtown. Mar, those lawmakers are going on record with what they say was discussed with the president. Well, Devin, they are saying that they discussed further COVID-19 federal dollars for the state of Michigan. What they are not saying whether they discussed with the president is the Michigan vote certification process. That said, they are making their feelings clear on it. 
The leaders of Michigan's House and Senate met with the president this afternoon, and in a joint statement, both Senate Majority Leader Shirky and House Speaker Chatfield say, quote, we used our time in the White House to deliver a letter to President Trump, making clear our support for additional federal funds to help Michigan in the fight against COVID-19. We have since sent the same correspondence to congressional leaders. Now, they then say they made the ask for further federal dollars to deal with the impact of COVID. Currently, it's hundreds of millions of dollars in federal money that is backfilling the state budget. Tonight, Democratic activists are projecting their pictures on the front of the Trump Hotel where they are presumed to be staying. Both leaders did address the vote certification process. Quote, we have not yet been made aware of any information that would change the outcome of the election in Michigan. And as legislative leaders, we will follow the law and follow the normal process regarding Michigan's electors, just as we have said throughout this election. I, I know both the speaker and, and, uh, and, and the, se the Senate Majority Leader well. They're, they're folks who do respect the law. They, they're folks who do follow the rule of law. And, uh, and so, again, you know, I, I'll take their public statements or what they are, which is that they've said they, they, they stand with the will of the voters, which, again, in, in our case, has been very clear. Back here live, the State Board of Canvassers is set to meet on Monday to take up certifying Michigan's election results. Devin Kimberly, back to you. In fact, uh, what, what are you hearing? Uh, anything that should stop the State Board of Canvassers on making that decision on Monday? I don't know, Devin, at least from what I've been getting from politicos, I don't know that we're going to have a final decision from the State Board of Canvassers on Monday. We may, that's certainly possible, mm -hmm. but I don't think it would be surprising if this process um, goes for a couple more days. Mm. All right, Back we will be on it all throughout the day as we start the new week. All right, Mara. Yes, we will. Okay. Well, another day with temperatures in the 60s, but that's not what we're going to have this weekend. Ben is tracking <laughs> some rain, but some snow too, Ben. Yeah, it is getting November very quickly here as we head into the weekend, guys. We saw numbers three degrees away from a record high today as we finished out at 67. Cold front has come through, but look at the numbers right now. Uh, even where we're sitting here at 11 o'clock on Friday night, some of these numbers are what we would typically see for highs this time of year. 47 at Metro, 50 at City Airport, and cooling down a little bit more there to the northwest. And you can tell with those northwest winds, everything's behind the front now. We're just going to see this cold air continue to pile in here over the next 24 hours. So we'll wake up at 38. We'll max out tomorrow at 47, right at average for this time of year. Staying dry on Saturday, but not so much as we finish the weekend on Sunday. Snow comes to the Great Lakes, and you can see that creeping in there as we get in through the day on Sunday. This will be more than just a couple flakes. We'll talk about how much accumulation, who sees what, and how long it's going to last. All coming up in a few minutes, guys. Ben, President Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., has tested positive for coronavirus. Spokesperson says he tested positive earlier this week, is asymptomatic, and has been quarantining at his cabin. Here at home, Wayne County is urging all school districts to switch to remote learning until at least January 15th of next year. The advisory comes as the state reported a new daily record of coronavirus cases with 9,779 new cases in the past 24 hours and 53 new deaths were also reported. We spoke with Wayne County Executive Warren Evans, who's concerned about the number of new cases they're seeing in Detroit and the rest of the county. I'm not talking about a long-term fix. I'm talking about a county where the positivity rate doubled in one day, and we have over, uh, you know, Detroit and Wayne County, over 1,400 new cases of COVID today. Uh, and that doubled in one day from 600. And so if this trend continues, I don't think it, it takes a, a rocket scientist to figure out that we need to have some significant remedies to fix it. And we did have a major development on the vaccine front as Pfizer and BioNTech submitted their vaccine to the FDA for emergency use authorization. This is the first coronavirus vaccine to seek regulatory clearance in the United States. The FDA has scheduled a meeting December 10th to consider whether to approve the vaccine for emergency use. 
A 14 year old boy is rushed to the hospital after being shot on Detroit's east side. This happened on Houston Whittier Street, a few blocks east of Gratiot. Police believe the shooting may be connected to a fight that happened earlier in the day. One person has been taken into custody tonight. That boy, though, is in critical condition. So looking for a suspect in a mass shooting at a Wisconsin mall. Eight people were shot this afternoon at the mall near Milwaukee. Police say the shooter already left by the time officers got there. They searched the mall, helping shoppers and workers who hid inside. Others ran, describing the chaotic scene. Everybody started screaming, and like I saw a lot of people running. I ran. I just ran as fast as I could out the door. The city's mayor says none of the injuries are believed to be life-threatening. Police are now looking for the shooter. They don't yet have a motive. An update now to a story we first told you about yesterday. Slow's Barbecue's stolen trailer found stripped of everything inside. Yeah, the restaurant owner says their 26 foot trailer was found this morning. It was a mobile kitchen, but now all of the equipment inside is gone. The trailer was stolen from a lot on Michigan Avenue earlier this week. Anyone with information is asked to call Detroit police. Still ahead, a financial advisor is at the center of a murder investigation after his client's apparent suicide. Yeah, new tonight, the trail of evidence that led investigators to charge him with murder. But first, the chair of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers ends her silence about Tuesday's controversial meeting. I endured about two hours worth of commentary, most of it calling me a racist. Tonight, she's defending her vote to block the election results from being certified. We'll have that story next.